So as it turns out, love may in fact change everything, but what it can't do is turn a three decades old, semi-successful musical that no longer resonates with a contemporary audience into a hit. Oh my god, hey, welcome back to my theatre-themed YouTube channel. My name is Mickey Joe, and I am obsessed with all things theatre. I am a theatre critic, content creator, and pundit based here in the UK, and today we are going to talk through the shocking announcement that Aspects of Love will be closing early in the West End. Yes, if this is the first time you are hearing this news, the current West End revival of the Andrew Lloyd Webber musical Aspects of Love is going to end its run early at the Lyric Theatre. This production began performances on the 13th of May. It was originally due to run until the 11th of of November, but it will now close on Saturday the 19th of August, in the middle of the summer. And if you had tickets for any of these now cancelled performances, then you ought to have already been contacted at your point of purchase. If you haven't, I would encourage getting in touch. Now right off the bat, before I begin to analyse this closure and what it means for this show, and for the West End, and for the people involved, I want to express my sympathies to the cast and the crew, and everyone who is now going to be losing a job as a result of this closure. The theatre industry, as we know, is a fickle mistress, and it really sucks when things like this happen. I'm thinking in particular about Vinnie Coyle, who is in the company of this show and was also in the company of Cinderella when it closed early in the West End. And yes, we are going to be talking more about the parallels between these two shows. So whenever something like this happens, questions arise. What does this mean for the show? What does this mean for the Lyric Theatre? And what does this mean for its composer, Sir Andrew Lloyd Webber? Not the producer of this particular show, but inextricably linked to it nonetheless. I'm going to do my best to answer all of those questions for you in today's news video. If you enjoy this one, make sure to subscribe to my theatre-themed YouTube channel so you don't miss any of the reviews, features, or news that I post coming soon. But for now, let's talk about why Aspects of Love is closing early in the West End. So why is this happening, first of all? Well, the answer to this is twofold. We have to address the fact that it's still a very challenging time to produce theatre in the West End. And this is reflected in the lengths of runs that we are seeing. We are seeing many shows just staging very short, limited runs in the West End. Theatres like the Ambassadors Theatre has been hosting several shows this year, doing five-week, six-week runs. You can look at shows like Operation Mincemeat at the Fortune Theatre, which is proving to be quite successful, but only extending by very small increments each time. The exception to this has been something like Mrs. Doubtfire the Musical, which has just announced a massive extension on the back of some very positive reviews. My review is not numbered among those, but the rest have been quite positive. So in the midst of all of this, Aspects of Love had announced a six-month run at the Lyric Theatre in the West End. The Lyric Theatre being a theatre of a decent size, it's not one of the most massive theatres in the West End, but it's not particularly small either. And when we look at the key things that a show seems to need at the moment to guarantee that it will sell very well, did this show have name recognition? Well, it's a familiar name among theatre fans and among those who know Andrew Lloyd Webber's work, his name being attached to it makes it known to a certain extent uh, even among non-theatre goers because Andrew Lloyd Webber is very well known in the UK. He is really the only British musical theatre composer that anyone has heard of outside of theatre going circles. Did it have a star name in the cast? We have Michael Ball, veteran star of the stage, radio personality, well known, lovely Michael Ball. And one of the big selling points of this revival was him returning to this show that played a big part in him becoming a household name and a big success because he sang the song Love Changes Everything in the original production. That became a huge hit on the radio, he sings it on his concert tours around the country, and now he is singing it back in the show in the West End. They have even restructured and rewritten the show so that his character can now sing that song rather than the character he used to play that's played by someone else. Spoiler alert, it doesn't work dramatically in the show whatsoever, but if you want to hear more about that, you can go and watch my review video. So this show had some things going for it, but it certainly didn't tick every box of being a huge surefire commercial hit. And when I sat down to review it a few months ago, I really struggled to work out who this show was appealing to. I think there was a part at the end of the review where I said, who, who should go and see this show? Who would enjoy this production? And I really struggled to come up with an answer. It's certainly not a show for young people because society has progressed a lot since that original production and some of the things that are depicted in this show, this sort of dubiously incestuous and inappropriately age-gapped tale of many different intertwined romances. I think certainly a young audience in today's age would find that more than a little bit creepy. It's also not a family show, it's not a funny show, it's not a particularly uplifting show. What you are left with is the people who loved the music and the people who loved that original production looking to revisit it. 
But it's not like it was this huge, enormous success the first time around, like when we were recently reviving a Miss Saigon or, or bringing back some sort of huge hit that everyone would want to go and see again. The show had a decent run originally, giving way to a decent number of people who would want to see it again this time around. But a decent number of people isn't enough to sell out this theater for the length of run that was originally planned. And unfortunately, the reviews didn't help. Now, while I don't think that reviews in the UK and in the West End have the power to close a show the same way they might on Broadway, because people are generally spending more money on tickets on Broadway, so they look to the reviews more closely to see if this is going to be worth their money. And it wouldn't be unreasonable to assume that there are a decent number of people who stayed away in the face of some of the really negative reviews that this show got. I'm equally not going to sit here and pretend that I didn't give the show a largely negative review. I really struggled to enjoy this production and I couldn't work out who it was meant to be for. But like I said, it's not just reviews that will affect ticket sales. You also have to look at the word of mouth. Now by some fluke, I have happened to be passing by this theater three or four times at the exact moment that the audience is coming out. And what I've noticed every single time, people are not smiling, people are not chatting to each other, because the ending of this show is peculiar. It's not uplifting, it's not romantic, it's not rhapsodic, it's not particularly sad or inspiring. We've just come from a funeral where the dead guy's nephew has just hooked up with the dead guy's ex-mistress, and then the dead guy's wife tries to convince the nephew that he should stay there and love her and not love her inappropriately young daughter who's also his first cousin. And even if that wasn't a weird way for the plot to end, the way that the show actually ends with its material is so open-ended and bizarre, no wonder people are leaving this theatre looking dumbfounded. Faced with that being your enduring final memory of the show, do you go and recommend it to a friend the next day? Or do you say, well, it was, it was interesting, which is British for bad and strange and peculiar and not worth your time or money. Like I said, I don't know how this show is meant to affect people emotionally with those final moments, but it seemed to be leaving audience members indifferent, from what I could tell when looking at the faces of the people leaving the Lyric Theatre. Now let's talk about marketing, because a show can sink or swim based on its marketing. There have been a lot of great shows in the West End that haven't been able to really get off the ground because people haven't known how to market them. Something like A Come From Away had a decent run in the West End, but could have run longer if it weren't for the fact that it's so challenging to market that show. You have the blue and the yellow. The name itself has no kind of recognition with a UK audience. There's not a lot of songs in it that are easy to take and perform on like a TV show and an advertising spot. And just describing the show itself can present challenges because it's about this very American concept and 9-11 is a big factor, but it's not strictly about 9-11. And you also don't want to necessarily lead with that in the marketing, especially in a post-COVID world where people wanted to see something uplifting. Now, Come From Away is super uplifting, but if you lead with 9-11, people aren't going to believe that. So talking about the marketing of Aspects of Love, you had this. You had the word love in big pink letters. They were selling love with these four different characters, one of whom was Michael Ball, which helps. Now the problem is, this is not the only show in the West End selling love, and there are other shows that sell love better. You get a steamy, obsessive, passionate love if you go to Moulin Rouge. You get young love if you go to Greece. You get this sort of unspoken, intense love if you go to Oklahoma. This is not the only show that is offering audiences love. And they just had a really big marketing opportunity with West End Live. Now I spoke about this already in my West End Live review, but they made a very peculiar choice because West End Live is a huge opportunity. You get thousands of people in Trafalgar Square, further thousands of people who then watch the recorded performances online. It's a great opportunity to sell yourself to those musical theatre fans who then might buy tickets if they like what they see. But for a great many young musical theatre fans who would engage with West End Live, who probably wouldn't have already booked tickets to go see Aspects of Love, what did they bring out? They brought out Jamie and Laura Pitt-Pulford to sing Seeing is Believing. And it was stirring, and it was romantic, and it was beautifully sung, but it's not the big selling point of this show. Had they brought out Michael Ball to sing Love Changes Everything, at least they would have appealed to a generation for whom that would have had a little bit more recognition. I just think that this was a very strange way of trying to sell the show, and it pointed to them not really knowing how best to sell this show, how to market it, or who the audience is. And if you can't answer that question, the show is not going to sell. Now this comes as a little bit of a surprise, in as much as this is not something that happens often in the West End. We see it a lot on Broadway. Shows will close a abruptly on Broadway, either after not getting Tony nominations or not winning Tonys or getting terrible reviews. And sometimes that closing will come around quite quickly because people don't want to waste any more money than they already have. Weekly running costs on Broadway are huge. And if you are losing money, then producers want to shut that down. 
But in the West End, you're much more likely to see a show sort of slowly bleed as it inches towards the finish line, largely because many of these runs at the moment are only small limited runs anyway. And it is surprising because it's been a really long time since we have seen a musical closing early. Not since we've seen a show closing early, this has happened quite recently. Uh, the production of Bleak Expectations, currently playing at the Criterion Theatre, is also going to close its run early in August, which is a terrible shame because this is actually a lovely and charming production that I think a British audience would really love if people knew what it was. Again, I don't know if this has been a marketing issue with trying to communicate what this show is. A part of me wonders if both of these shows are playing in the West End simply at the wrong time. Both Aspects of Love and Bleak Expectations, which is a parody of multiple different Charles Dickens stories, feel more like winter shows. For Aspects of Love, if it ran through January, through February, through Valentine's Day, that's a marketing opportunity right there. Neither of them feel like shows that I would want to go and see or that anyone would want to go and see in the middle of the summer. They're certainly not fun summer hits and they're not going to be able to compete with the shows that are. I'm trying to think of the last time we saw a musical closing early and it might be Cinderella when that announced it was going to close abruptly at the Gillian Lynn Theatre in the West End a few years ago. Now we're going to talk more about the Andrew Lloyd Webber of it all later in the video but I just wanted to draw that comparison. I will say it is a little bit harder to see these things coming because there's a lack of financial transparency in the West End. Unlike on Broadway, weekly grosses are not published in the West End so we do not know how much money a show is making but all you needed to do was look at how many tickets were still available for Aspects of Love for upcoming performances, the fact that the balcony was not even open for many of those, to see that this was not selling well. That is something I did at the beginning of this week, and to be completely honest with you, I have been waiting for this announcement to drop ever since. So what does this mean for Aspects of Love as a show beyond this particular production? Well, this is a show that has a dated plot. I have to imagine that even when this first was put on, it had a dated plot. Like, the things that are depicted in this show were not considered acceptable within society. Perhaps audiences just had a different attitude to seeing those kinds of things depicted on stage. But certainly, reviewers and many audience members and many people I know have turned their noses up at this production. We have this young girl character who falls in love with her cousin. Now, in the original production, there was meant to be a little bit of dubiousness about whether he might actually be her illegitimate father. And she was originally 15, and there was a song at the end that sang, it won't be long before Jenny's a woman. In this production, they've made her 18, so everything's fine now. And I also think because of the timeline, there's no feasible way in this production that he could be her father, but there are bigger issues that need fixing within this show. And if this careful rewrite of the show couldn't fix those issues, I don't know if anyone will ever be able to. So is this show going to be able to have any kind of a future life in the UK beyond this version? I don't know. It may get relegated to the world of standalone concert productions. Uh, maybe it can try and have another life again in the US. I don't know. I'm not sure what this means for Aspects of Love, but it's certainly nothing positive. It will be a while before it can shake the memory of this failed West End revival. What does this mean for the Lyric Theatre meanwhile? Well, the Lyric Theatre is where Hades Town is going to be opening next year. Aspects of Love was meant to be running up until November, and then over the Christmas period between Aspects and Hades Town, we were meant to be having a return of Peter Pan Goes Wrong. Currently playing on Broadway, I don't know if it was going to be the same cast from Broadway that were going to come and do it in the West End, aka many of the original members of Mischief Theatre. I suspect it probably wasn't going to be that same cast, or isn't going to be that same cast, I should say, because that production is still going to take place. But we now have a gap between the 19th of August, when Aspects is going to close, and the 11th of November, when it was meant to close. Nearly two months. On Broadway, it would be more expensive to get a show in there for a two-month run, and it wouldn't really have the chance to recoup its investment. So for that reason, the theatre would probably just sit dark in the interim. But in the West End, something is definitely going to go in and try and fill that spot. And I don't know for certain, but the rumour I'm hearing is a certain regional production might be looking to make its way in. A regional production that I saw recently and reviewed. It has some star names attached that might sell tickets. It's got a great set design. The play itself is nice enough, but critically, it is not selling tickets where it currently is. Maybe it would sell a little bit better with a West End crowd. I don't know. But based on its current financial success, it doesn't seem to be a much better candidate for the Lyric Theatre than Aspects of Love was. On that front, we will have to wait and see, but feel free to speculate about what shows might be going in in the comment section down below. Finally, what does this mean for Sir Andrew Lloyd Webber? So like I said, he is not the producer of this show, so this is not a big failure that we ought to be attributing to him. And too many things are attributed to Andrew Lloyd Webber. He gets the blame for too many things. 
However, I do think it's impossible to have this conversation without mentioning his name, because like I said, the last time a show closed early in the West End, it was Cinderella at the Gillian Lynn Theatre. Albeit under very different circumstances, because that show had actually had some pretty decent reviews from the critics, unlike on Broadway, where it got massacred by the critics, ignored by the Tonys, and then abruptly shut shortly afterwards. But it is true that the mood around Andrew Lloyd Webber's show seems to have shifted slightly. This in a year where we are about to see a lot of Andrew Lloyd Webber revival and concerts. Wizard of Oz, his version of Wizard of Oz, is opening at the London Palladium just next week. Coming up later in the summer, we have a Vita in concert, we have Love Never Dies in concert, we have a big revival of Sunset Boulevard starring Nicole Scherzinger opening later this year at the Savoy Theatre. It feels as though Aspects of Love was meant to be the start of this sort of rehabilitating PR campaign. But if this was meant to be the first step back up the ladder for Andrew Lloyd Webber in terms of regaining his once glistening West End reputation, it has not gone well. But for now, that is all we know about the closing of Aspects of Love in the West End. I hope you have enjoyed today's video. I hope it's answered some of the questions that you might have had about the early closure of this show. Feel free to speculate in the comments section and share your thoughts and your insights. If you did enjoy this video, make sure to subscribe to my theatre-themed YouTube channel for more news, reviews, and features about all things West End and Broadway coming very soon. I hope that everyone is staying safe and that you have a stagey day. For ten more seconds, I'm Mickey Joe Theatre. Oh my god, hey. Thanks for watching, have a stagey day. Subscribe! <laughs>